The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, says the commission will require 305 billion naira to conduct the 2023 general elections. He discloses during a meeting with the Senate Committee on Appropriation at the National Assembly on Monday. He also noted that the amount will enable the commission to prepare the election and purchase all the election materials needed. It will also cover several by-elections across the country. He, however, stated that the commission had already received 100 billion naira out of the required amount for the elections. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriation, Senator Jibrin Barao, has disclosed that the 2022 budget will be laid debated and passed on Tuesday, December 21. We are an executive body, so we submit our proposals to the National Assembly through the executive. And we made a submission for the sum of 305 billion for the 2023 general elections. It's a very comprehensive 22-page document with 260 budget lines. Now, in submitting the executive proposal to the National Assembly, the sum of 140 billion was made available to INEC as a one-line item in the budget. 140 billion was broken into two. We take it that the 40 billion is a regular budget uh, as an agency of government. And the 100 billion was uh, the first trench towards the 2023 general elections. And we have gone ahead to uh, make provisions accordingly. And then uh, that is the outstanding 205. What we are tomorrow or when? On Philly. On Philly. Tomorrow or Philly. We are going to lay tomorrow okay. for the passage. Okay. Uh, uh, we are going to submit and consider. Submit and tomorrow. consider. Yes, tomorrow. Yes, uh, yes, yes. We are going to present and consider. Present and consider. We are going to present. And then the presentation will be tomorrow and the consideration will be tomorrow as well. Okay. By the grace of God. Okay. Uh, we'll be waiting for them. Okay. And they've given all the fullest information required from of them. And uh, we are proceeding to put together a report for our submission to the plenary tomorrow. Okay. God willing. Okay. Uh, we're going to present and then it's going to be considered tomorrow. Okay. We have joining us live now, Ambrose Igboke. He is a public affairs analyst. Mr. Igboke, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Marianne. Well, the much talked about um, INEC request for 305 billion naira to conduct elections, of course, has raised eyebrows. And I'm wondering, um, do you think that INEC needs this much for the elections in 2023? Well, to conduct an election with 300 and something billion, that is almost a billion dollars, is something that um, uh, we have to start rethinking our electionary process. We have to start uh, thinking of how cost effective we can now uh, conduct our elections. Uh, because this has become almost um, a yearly budget head. Each election cycle, we try to spend humongous amount of money. Uh, I remember in 2015, they were talking about card readers, introduction of new technologies. Uh, this time around, they talked about the introduction of another new technology. Uh, so maybe the uh, majority, a large share of the budget should go into uh, hardware. Uh, into purchasing of digital equipment that we uh, ensure more credibility uh, in our election system. But again, um, it's not just about the figure. It's also about the inflation of, uh, uh, and then the falling spread of the Naira against the dollar. Um, because when you look at it critically, uh, everywhere there's inflation. Uh, we are not exporting anything. If you check out all those materials that uh, I like, uh, uh, all the materials that is using for the uh, election, uh, all of the materials are, in, are imported, all from the paper to the machines uh, to the little things that we need to, you know, conduct the elections. They're imported, and because we don't export anything, uh, except the crude oil, even the crude oil, we need to refine. We don't even refine it. So basically, we have nothing we are exchanging uh, in terms of the naira to dollar parity. So it keeps going high. Even the cost of domestic uh, items have changed. So it may not be uh, high in the as aspect of it in terms of the real value of money, but the amount is high when you mention the, the sheer size of it. So sometimes let's look at it uh, critically to know what can that actually buy in the international market because INEC has to buy everything. Yeah. I remember 
-hmm. that INEC is so central, you know, is so centrally controlled mm -hmm. that they need to pay for ad hoc staff, they need logistics, they need to print a ballot papers. So it's a humongous thing. Elections, and that is why some people have advocated that this election should be, you know, staggered. I mean, election being done one time uh, every year, uh, every particular point of the year is uh, is going to cost a lot of uh, money. Then after four years, what happened to the materials? What happened to the hardware okay. that were purchased by INEC? Some of them come obsolete. Some of them have become upgraded. Some of them become disused. Some of them get spoiled. Then another four years, we start budgeting again. So we should look for a way of uh, actually saving uh, for the uh, for another cycle of election, upgrading the technologies we have and not discarding them totally. For example, where are the card readers of 2015 election? Where are they? Mm. Have we just discarded them like that? Or have we put them in use for another uh, national assignment? So we cannot just continue to be a wasteful nation like that. But does that not bring but, that, but does that not bring to question our budgeting? Don't forget the National Assembly is on the twenty first of this month going to lay the budget, deliberate on it, and of course see what they, they're going to do with it. But does that not call to question um, governance and policy making? Because if we have to literally outsource everything, not even in Nigeria, but outside the country, it means of course we are um, one way or the other, on the losing end, and that's why the, the budget is continuously inflated. So why, why can't we have policies that can help us to, one way or the other, find a way to maybe print most of these ballot papers within the country, uh, try as much as possible to reduce the cost? Um, I, I don't think that those things are far-fetched if we decide to make these things happen within our borders. I, Mary, and if I will tell you, you know the addresses and contacts of these policymakers, and then uh, it will be very easy to actually reach out directly to them to answer this $1 million question why we couldn't do it. We can do any of those things here, but a country that even imports uh, toothpick and um, tissue papers and um, paper for printing of its own textbooks and for printing of its own newspapers, uh, a country that uh, imports uh, the only crude oil, the only commodity it has to export, which is the crude oil, it cannot refine it locally, but has to uh, send it out and bring it refined. Uh, so you cannot um, expect uh, such a country to now start printing uh, high sensitive materials like his uh, uh, ballot papers. Remember that even our currency, uh, at a very large time, is being printed outside. Mm. Though some of uh, we have been told that it's now being printed with Nigerian Minting and Securing Company. But that still needs to uh, be clarified. Um, there was a time we were told that to print a why to print a five naira note we was using thirty naira to print a five naira note. So it's it's a it's a country of profligacy. It's a country of wastage. Hmm. Uh, it's a country that doesn't know how to conserve for the future. It's a country that has nothing to offer uh, to the world apart from the human resources that we have um, in terms of goods exchange of goods. Uh, in terms of um, trade parity among other nations, we have nothing to offer. And therefore, it also affects INEC. But you can't blame INEC because INEC has a job to do. Mm. If papers are not produced in Nigeria, if the hardware are not produced in Nigeria, INEC cannot afford the and say to not convert election. It will go to where it can source uh, those materials and bring it so that we can have an election. Finally, uh, finally, I just want to take it, because, because we're not, we do not have too much time. Let me quickly take you up on the Electoral Act, uh, the bill that's uh, right in front of Mr. President. It's Yesterday made it 30 days. The ultimatum was 30 days um, for Mr. President to either assent to it or send it back and, and make some comments on it. We've not heard from the president publicly. Uh, we heard Garba Shehu, uh, the presidential aide, say that the president is not under any law uh, to publicly uh, make his comments or assent to the bill. But the, yet, again, the National Assembly does have a duty to veto Mr. President or overrule him and pass that bill uh, into law. So the question on everybody's mind is, um, does the National Assembly have the guts to do that, to, to, to veto Mr. President? Well, uh, what, what is happening is that uh, I think people are not uh, advising uh, Mr. President very well. And then one of the reasons I can clearly remember that was given was that uh, it was going to be very expensive, for example, to run direct primaries. That is going to cost around 500, uh, over 500 billion naira. While already, uh, if there's no uh, direct primaries, and it's going to cost almost 300 or something billion already. Anyway, INEC has come to deny that also, that they didn't say that. And I don't know what Gabba Show is talking about, that the president doesn't owe Nigerians an 
explanation. It does. It means if you if you rejects something that the National Assembly, which is a miniature of representatives from all over the country, that has said that we want this, and he said no for certain reasons, those reasons should be advanced, and then we explain to Nigerians. And as for this National Assembly, well, uh, they have not been able to assert themselves in a very long time. So, as you said, Nigerians are waiting to see if this is uh, uh, what is going to happen. But I doubt very much that if they are going to veto the president. Well, Ambrose Igboke, thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Marianne. All right. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.